In this tutorial, let's simulate a scenario where multiple spheres are going to hit a metal wall. So we're going to take a look at the activators module and the Metalsoft module in a little more detail. Let's quickly build the scene. Let's take the cube and this is going to be our metal wall and the thickness of this metal wall. Let's say 0 0.05. So these are the dimensions of the metal wall. And let's add a plane. And this is going to be our particle emitter for the spheres. And let's apply rotation and scale for both of these objects. And while the plane is selected, let's get to RBD lab and under motion, select the particles to widget bodies tab and then click on emit. So this is gonna start emitting a few particles. Now let's change the number to something like 20. And let's say the start frame is gonna be five and the end frame is gonna be 75. And the lifetime, let's leave it at 250. And let's give a normal velocity of 10. So this is not sufficient. So let's increase the normal velocity to something like 50. Okay, that looks good. So these spheres are gonna hit the metal wall. Perfect. Now, for the object to emit, let's add a UV sphere. And let's scale it down a bit. And let's apply scale. Now while the plane is selected, let's select the object to emit as this sphere. And in the conversion tab, here we have an option called kinematics end. So this indicates at which frame for each particle the particle needs to be converted to rigid body. Like for example, the first particle is emitted at frame five. So let's count the number of frames. One, two, three, four. So the third frame is when it has to be converted to a rigid body. So let's say the particles need to be converted to rigid bodies on the third frame. Now, while the plane is selected, Let's hit convert. So this converts all the particles to rigid bodies. And here we can see the uh, parameters for the rigid bodies. Looks good. So let's hide the plane and let's hide the original sphere. And let's select and then click shade smooth. Now let's work on the wall. Let's head to the fracture module. Let's add a standard scatter and let's increase the density to something like 400 and fracture. The fracture looks good. Apply fracture and let's head to the physics module and let's add a ground and toggle the visibility and let's go to RBD and then let's click on metal soft and add rigid bodies to this target collection. And let's head to constraints module. And while the cube low source collection is selected under source filter as collections and the type of constraint as soft constraint, let's uncheck breakable and let's check on iterations with 100 iterations so the constraints are stronger. And check on between chunks as we want the constraints to be formed between the chunks. And once we click on create constraint group, the constraints are formed. Now here, under constraint settings, let's deselect the spring angle. And under spring limit linear, let's increase this to something like 5000 and click on update. Let's move on to the activators module and let's select dynamic as a layer type. And let's select these chunks and add layer. So this is going to start off with the dynamic animations 
And then only when the activator activates the chunk, then we will perform certain actions. So before recording anything, let's just check. There we go. Some of the spheres are passing through the wall. And the reason for this would be the number of substeps. So the substeps per frame, there are only four. Let's increase this to 10. Looks much better now. Perfect. Now let's get back to the activators module. And while this layer is selected, the dynamic layer, let's select all of these spheres and let's add activator to each of these spheres. And the activator type, let's select sphere. So this is going to add sphere activators to each of these spheres. Now, under Activators tab here, we can change the scale of the spheres so that it closely matches the sphere. And under Dynamics, we can choose to start off so that the chunks are not activated before contact. And then when the activator starts activating, let's say we would like to choose on and off with the frames between actions as three frames. So as the activator comes in contact with the chunks, it's going to activate for three frames and then deactivates. So let's see, with the margin of one, let's hit record. And there we go. So the red color stays for three frames. So that's what this indicates. Looks good. So here, for example, let's take a look at what the margin does. So this margin indicates how many chunks would be activated. So let's say we reduce the margin to something like 0.5. Let's remove and re-record. And then let's take a look. There we go. So previously, For this sphere, these many chunks were activated. But when we reduce the margin, only these many chunks are activated. So that's how the margin modulates what kind of a dent we're going to get in the metal. So now that we have so now that we have the deformation, let's head to the metal soft module and let's click on create mesh deform so that the original mesh is bound to the fractured chunks. And when we take a look at this mesh, there's not much geometry for it to deform. So let's increase the mean crease to one so that the edges still stay sharp. And let's add more control loops. Now let's take a look. And once we change the geometry, we always have to rebind. There we go. Now let's increase the geometry because this geometry is not sufficient. So here under modifier layers, let's add a modifier and let's add a subsurf modifier. And let's increase the levels. Update modifiers. There we go. Those are the metal dents. Looks good. Now we can also add more detail to these dents. So the way we can do that is by using uh, dynamic paint. And this add-on does that in a very interesting way. So first let's select all the activators and under activators module let's hide these activators now while the spheres are selected again let's create another layer and this time let's select vertex groups 
Now for the wall, currently we don't have any vertex groups. But as soon as we add a layer, a vertex group is created. Now let's uncheck the previous layer. And this is the new layer that we just added. And while this layer is checked, let's select all of these spheres and let's add activator and let's select the sphere activator. And under activators, let's reduce the scale to something close to the sphere. Cool. Now, while the wall is selected, let's get to the weight paint. And let's see, there we go. So wherever the activator comes in contact with the wall, the weights are changed. So we can use this information with the dynamic paint to give more detail at these locations. So let's see how we can do that. So when we go back to the Metal Soft module, we have seen this Modifiers Layers tab. Here, this is such a powerful tool that we can do a lot of uh, modifications here. So let's add a modifier and let's add a Displace modifier on the wall. And let's click on New Texture. And let's reduce the strength to something like 0.1 to begin with. We can reduce it even more. There we go. And here, noise size, we can increase or decrease based on the level of detail we are looking for. Let's say something like 0.29. And then under vertex group, we can actually select the vertex group which was created under the activator's uh, module. And let's click on Update Modifiers. So now what happens is when each of these sphere hits the wall, we can start seeing the details. There we go. So that's the detail we were looking for. Let's say we would like to change the extent of this detail on the wall. We can do that by heading to Activators module, and under Vertex Group tab, we have something called the Radius Scale. Now, as we reduce the Radius Scale, we can see the detail change. So let's say, let's select something like 0.3. There we go. And we can reduce it further as well, let's say 0.2. There we go. So wherever the sphere hits, that's where we see additional detail on the wall. Now let's select all these spheres and let's hide the activators. And under Mesh Visualization Options, let's have the pretty shading on. And let's, let's first save this file. And let's do a flipbook render. And let's play the rendered animation. There we go. That's the beauty of the MetalSoft module. Thank you and stay tuned for more tutorials.